Oh, hello, everybody. This is Greg Proops, the specky one from Whose Line Is It Anyway? and the smartest man in the world, Proopcast. And you're listening to The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John and Pete. You are, and we are here indeed with Greg Proops in the uh, Hilliard Guest Suite. Hilliard will be joining us as well, our frequent guest from the Screenwriter's Rant Room. But hey, Greg. God damn, man. Hey, John. What an honor it is to have you. Yeah, thanks. This, this I'm we're next to a construction it. site here. In case you hear any errant noise, it isn't the beating of our hearts. <laughs> it is not the beating Although of our hearts. Although our hearts are beating uh, at a regular pace. <laughs> yes. You know what? I just want to kick into a different gear than we're typically in. And absolutely, if you're not already listening to The Smartest Man in the World... Go listen to The Smartest Man in the World. You guys just did your 300th episode, huh? I, yeah, we did. It came so quickly. Uh, we started in 2010, and uh, the cats who do Jimmy Pardo's Never Not Funny and Doug Benson's uh, I Love Movies, Doug Loves Movies, asked me to do it. And uh, I was like, well, who will listen? What, you know, <laughs> like, who cares? And uh, yeah. Matt said something to me, which uh, Matt Belknap said, uh, that I don't know if it's true, but I've always tried to uh, respect it. He said, people, people like content. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they respond to content, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know if that's necessarily true." I've been in show business enough to understand that people like schlock, so I've tried to have some content on the show, and I, and I think they have. The fact that we're on after 300 episodes and uh, winner of no awards, and, uh, <laughs> we're, we're the longest running award seeking podcast in my, <laughs> and we haven't made a cable show out of it yet, which I'm pretty proud of. That's hilarious. I need some pen and a paper. We're going to give an award out today. Yeah, yeah. right. We'll make a certificate. I would appreciate the Hill Dog. You guys award. do one a week or two? I do one a week. Yeah. So we did one live at uh, Bar Lubitsch last week or Sunday, uh, two days ago, and then uh, we're going to do one at my crib at the Porpoise of Fruititude or the Por- the <laughs> Fortress of Fruititude. I like the Porpoise of Fruititude. We, all, we call it both all the time uh, <laughs> because I get everything wrong this week because I don't have a live date. But we try to do it live generally. And th- last year we did it in. Uh, uh, London, Glasgow, Paris, Antwerp, Stockholm, Montreal. You know, I, we try to get around with it. So Yeah, yeah. And we were wondering, because you've been doing this so long and, and you're so good at improvisation, is that almost kind of like a necessity for you just to get on there and, and get some of that stuff out? Or are you working on things? I mean, it seems like that you have to do it. I do have to do it. I want to do it more than anything else. My wife has been instrumental in the whole thing because after I did the first one and I had no idea what I was going to do I just kind of talked uh, she's like no this is what you need to do and then it all evolved after that sort of organically I didn't think of any of the gags or the running ideas that have been that are now part of the show that the listeners you know uh, Kittens McTavish is our mascot that was a complete uh, fluke we found a cardboard cat in a store in London <laughs> the uh, elusive ephemeral emotional support Munt Jack was something I improvised one night and now people send me pictures of Munt Jacks and and <laughs> Drawings. I have thousands of kittens at home. Uh, Satchel Page is just a hero of mine. I just started talking about him on the show. That's become an enormous thing in the show. So I didn't think of any of these things before him because I didn't think of anything. I came in unprepared and just got high. Uh, <laughs> but they've all evolved uh, out of. Uh, for a long time, it was baseball teams. It was baseball teams of because I used to talk to the crowd and get people up. And someone got up one night and went, "Who's your all-time Roman emperor baseball team?" So I went, "Well, Caligula behind the plate because he can handle balls." And you know, on and on and on and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so for a long time it was baseball team so we've got the Kings of England team who's and your the, third baseman Roman is it, uh, is it Cicero because he had good hands no well Cicero wasn't an emperor so but I, but I, I would make Cicero the legal counsel for the team okay I, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could talk yeah, that's yeah, for sure. yeah very eloquent so eloquent that when uh they finally got to him. Uh, Mark Antony really hated him because he hated Mark Antony. And he, he, uh, he didn't like Caesar much either, but he kept quiet. The conspirators wouldn't include Cicero in the group, right? Or they called themselves the liberators who assassinated Caesar. But Mark Antony, after Caesar was assassinated, ran him down and had his hands and tongue nailed to the door of the yes. Senate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had him executed. Sounds like, so that's that's what pimps do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, it's like, a lot like now. Yeah. It was, the Roman politics of then are, are a lot like now. It was Absolutely. A, uh, they, they gave out money to get elected to be consul or whatever. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, Cicero's an interesting person. Really loved his family. Caesar kind of cheated on his wife all the time. And 
<laughs> he was a pimp. That's Here's awesome. what you have to do when you have Greg Proops on your podcast. You have to cut in and say, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Greg. You have to raise your hand. Like it's so it doesn't start about Roman emperors for a year? Of the smartest man in the world is uh-huh. 300 episodes of Greg Proops with a microphone in front of him <laughs> and danger. no guest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So He's the it, Bob Uecker of, of podcasts. That's right. Does if if you're afraid mind. that he might go. You know, what? one of the exercises that Pete and I go through when we do this when we do our prep or when we're on our way to wherever we're going to capture a podcast, we go, Hey, so what do you want to talk to whoever our guest is going to be about? And we just went, so what do you want to talk? Oh, we just got to figure out how to fucking corral. <laughs> Greg. <Poole. laughs> He's not yeah. going to have any problem going off, but here's what I really wanted to start off with was you're from San Carlos, California. I am. Uh, we have Hilliard here. He's from Palo Alto. That's right. Pete and I are both from the Bay area. Where are you from? I'm, uh, Pete grew up in Benicia. I grew up in Vallejo. Oh, Benicia, oh, Vallejo. Yeah. yeah. What was the last show you saw at the Circle Star Theater? Wow. The last show? <laughs> I don't know that I can remember the chronologically the last show, but I saw um, uh, a Tower of Power and Cheech and Chong there with my Ooh. cousin Donnie. Oh yes. And I probably s- there. Buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw. Uh, I never saw Frank Sinatra. He played been. there a lot. Woody Allen played there too. Uh-huh. I, I, Sinatra played there, and I wished I'd seen him. I don't know why I didn't. My dad and mom took me to see Ella Fitzgerald with. Um, uh, uh, Count Basie Orchestra. Wow. And uh, uh, I've talked about it on the podcast because Count Basie at one point, he backed Ella, right? Like he first, Count Basie came out and did a set. Yeah. Then Ella came out and did her set. And she was big in those days. Mm-hmm. And uh, big they, as in weight. Large. Uh, weight. Her yeah. weight. She because I saw, person. I saw, that might have been the last show I saw there. I saw Ella Fitzgerald in the 80s with my wife and I took her to a Sunday matinee because I had a show that night. And we saw Ella Fitzgerald at a Sunday matinee and she was 70 something. She, she didn't live very long. She only made it about 75. Yeah. And, um, they put her up on stage. A big old guard came out with her and put her on a, a, a chair. And her, she sang the first number, right? And if you remember the, the Circle Star Theater, to describe it to the listeners, <laughs> was in the round, which is the worst way to see yes. anything ever. I yes. don't know why it was a thing, but it was. Never a good seat in the house. No, not one good seat. Yeah. So there was a star aisle that the star would come down at the beginning of the show. Uh-huh. And then the stage would start. And it was so creaky and old that you could hear the stage start. It would go. <laughs> and then the fucking stage would turn in a, in a circle so that every once in a while you got to see the artist that you came to see, right? right? <laughs> Chi Chin Chong in the round was hilarious, yes. right? Because they fantastically didn't have any set. They put two folding chairs out and did the first bit with, you know, oh, okay. Chong hitchhiking and him picking him up. And he got any weed. And then he went into a litany. He was 70s. I got Meshmacon. I got t- Meshmacon. Yeah. I got tie stick. I got red, right? Like all the, all the weed yeah. we smoked then. Uh, but so uh, we went to this uh, matinee of Ella Fitzgerald. And um, so she does the first number, right? It ain't, it don't mean a thing. If you ain't got that swing. Finishes and she goes, Mm. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> and you realize that she's only sitting halfway on the chair, right? They put her on a high chair because uh, she's old and can't really stand. But it's a stool. It's a stool. So she's ha- her, her ass right. is half on the chair. And everyone, because it was a matinee, right. everyone was 100. That was at the show, right? Like, <laughs> old ladies behind us, a, a, a fracas, a fracas, they right? They only let you Johnny in there because they counted the you and your wife us, together. Yeah. The woman behind us stands up and goes, can't you see she's not comfortable? And people start screaming. <laughs> old people start screaming. And my wife and I are like, what's happening, right? She was doing her own version of like a wedding with Tony and Tina, yeah. like it's interactive. Oh, yeah. It turned into like a Judas Priest concert. People were literally up in arms. A matinee up, mutiny. Up in arms. So the big security guard who'd, who'd held her hand and walked her on runs up on stage and picks her physically up and puts her back down on the chair. Put her ass square down on the chair. Wow. And he leaves the stage and she goes, hmm, that's better. Wow. And then did the rest of the yeah, show. She needed to have her ass I can't adjusted move. on a chair. Bitch, help me move. Uh-huh. <laughs> her hip was bad, you know. And we love you. Rest in peace, Ella Fitzgerald. But wow. good gracious. Uh, she had a lot of physical. So, and, I, and then I so it's mentioned this to my wife the other day. People think I'm a thousand. In 1966 or seven, I was six or seven years old. Yeah. Uh, my dad took me to see Jimmy Durante. At wow. The, at the Circle Star Theater. Yeah. I saw Jimmy Durante perform live. He did a vaudeville show. Hmm. Uh, with that had a guy did a uh, one it was J- Jackson Clayton and Durrani. Uh Jackson came out and he was the Irish tenor that was first mm-hmm. then Clayton came out in a tuxedo with a cane and did a fucking cakewalk I'm not huh. kidding yeah, yeah, yeah. which is a very old fashioned wow. form of like minstrel entertainment mm-hmm. like he you know did the thing yeah. and then Durrani came out with a piano showgirls showgirls wow. with headdresses <laughs> 
And he did, the, you know, stop the music, stop the all that shit. <laughs> and he did all of his songs one after the next. And my father, who bullshitted me my entire life, right? My, it was very difficult with my dad to tell what was true. Goes, I know the trombone player. And my mother, <laughs> my mother and I are like, whatever. And he's like, no, I used to go to the track with him in New York. We used to go to, you know, Aqueduct or whatever. Mm. So the intermission comes at the Jimmy Durante show. And we're, by the way, this is the 60s. We're, I'm in a suit and tie. I'm yeah. a child, right. Right? right? My mother's in a, you know, was, we're wearing, you know, we yeah. dressed up You're to dressed go to the up. fucking circle star. You were, yeah. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> one is tie, by the way. Right. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> Fuck here, that big one. <laughs> right. A little clippy tie. And here comes the band down the aisle at the break, right? At the intermission. In the intermission and uh, my dad goes I'll prove to you that I know the trombone player and he goes hey Jim or whatever the guy's name was mm-hmm. and the guy turns and I mean he hadn't seen my dad in probably 15-20 years and he goes oh hey Steve <laughs> <laughs> and we were like you did know him he's like I told you I knew him I told you yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a good thing That's he funny. didn't say hey Steve you still got that 15 bucks? I was going to say, you, uh, you borrowed 50 from me in 1949, yeah. you, you cheap pisha. Uh, I'd have punched you in the mouth. Yeah, I saw uh, Pearl Bailey there with Louis Belson's Holy orchestra. Holy shit. Wow. I Christ. saw uh, uh, Patty Page and the Mills Brothers. Wow. Um, the Step Brothers, who were like the Nicholas Brothers, they were a tap dance act, mm-hmm. and they were from Vaudeville. Mm-hmm. And then they brought out their grandchildren. I also saw Cosby there. Uh, Shanana. Well, you guys went. Every Shanana. Week. It was. It was. It, it was, was right the only, there in yeah, San like, Carlos, it was, right? So, it was, San Carlos is such a nothing little small it's, place. It's, but it's tiny. Across the tracks was this. What would you call it? A theater across cabaret. The yeah. It was a yeah. night. It was a big old nightclub that held. Well, I don't know, a couple thousand people. Yeah, maybe fifteen hundred. Yeah, fifteen hundred. It wasn't. Yeah. And you sat in the goddamn round, and they had the worst snack bar in the world. It was Cokes and hot dogs. Mm-hmm. It was terrible. But they had <laughs> everything. It was like there. the old airport snack right, bar. Right, old, right. Like, it, remember in the airport when there was no food? Yeah, all no you could food. get hot there dogs. was a hot dog and a pretzel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Potato chips. And you're there to see Frank Sinatra, you know, like. <laughs> so, but my parents took me to see all those acts. You and got the, dressed up. You wore a suit. Oh, yeah, you, you were did. six, and the only thing you could get with a, was a. Hot dog. Right. At that's the time, I remember. At least you get eaten the show. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking they were dragging me in. But now I'm really glad that they took me to see Ella Fitzgerald and Count Basie mm-hmm. and Pearl Bailey. And For I got sure. to see all these acts. Well, you, you got to see Pearl Bailey with the Louis Belson Orchestra. Louis Belson was What kid so... gets to say? Who if, among our contemporaries gets to say that? Yeah, I know, right? And then I talk about this on the show. And of course, the kids who listen to the podcast are like, how old are you? And I'm like, <laughs> this was the 70s. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, they were all still alive. So Louis Belson was awesome. He's a, tr- he's a tremendous big band drummer. So, but right before James Brown, first died, drummer to play double bass. Just right there, that you are. Out. Boom! Uh, right before uh, says the drummer. When did James Brown die? Five, <laughs> yeah. seven years ago. Yeah, seven about, years. About ago. five, seven years ago, mm-hmm. we went to see him at the Hollywood Bowl. In the middle of the show, and James Brown show. I won't, I won't go into that because I won't let you guys talk. But <laughs> this two bands on stage: the Soul Generals that had his kids in it, and then another band. They switched bands. It was really wild. In the middle of that show, ladies and gentlemen, Louis Belson. <laughs> and he must have been 80. Holy smoke. And they brought Louis Belson out, and he just did a solo for 10 minutes really? in a suit and tie. He looked like a mafia. Yeah. You know, right? Like he had a yeah. gold tie and a black suit on and the cufflinks. And he came out, and he just wham, bam, blah, 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 and just laid it down for like 10 minutes. Laid it down. And I said to my wife, I saw him in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, I thought he was ancient then, you yeah. know. Wow. He saw, was Pro Bailey's band leader and husband at the time. Yeah. I saw Buddy Rich do that at Marriott's oh Great God. America. Yeah. Set up right there, like as you walked in, like once you got past the uh, merry go round, like, yeah. he's up there, like way high, like where you didn't put anybody, and he's just banging on drums for an hour, you know? Wow. Yeah, that was cool. Isn't it weird the acts that would play these amusement parks? Yeah. It was crazy. Great it's America. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not Seriously. the amphitheater park, but right. the actual just park. Just outside. Yeah, just in yeah. the park. Yeah, Buddy like, Rich. Right, right, right by where like the, the triple play, that ride is off to the left, like right in the beginning. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> up there just beating on shit. It's crazy. Louis Belson used to do this thing because he had two bass drums, and he would do this thing where he would show off what he was doing with his hands. He'd play some crazy rudiment on the snare drum, and then he would play it with his feet. Yeah. And he was just, man, that, he was a monster. He really was. Is he, is he, is he alive? Can he no, be alive? No, no. He, he, he must died, have passed. He died about 20 years ago. No, he didn't, because I saw him with James Brown. No. How long ago was that? 
whenever right before James Brown died. It's about seven. Oh, seven, we seven saw James Brown in autumn, and he died Christmas that God, year. I thought Louis Belson died before Buddy Rich. No, I'm telling you, I freaked out because they brought Louis Belson on, and, and he I was played. Like, he threw, He's he got to be 141. Like, wow. He was in better it's shape than James Brown was at the time. <laughs> James Brown was whipped thin at the end. Yeah. Then he had been chunkier. Yeah. But he got sick in his teeth and whatnot. And he, he didn't dance a whole lot. And they only did, like, the first half was supposed to be standards. And he didn't know. They had sheet music on stage. And I was yeah. crying. Oh. I'm like, if there's one person you know doesn't read sheet music, it's right. James Brown. Yeah. Right? That's like giving Paul McCartney sheet music. Yeah. He's going to look at it and go, I don't know. Yeah. I taught myself to play, man. <laughs> <Is that laughs> Louis Wilson died in 2009. Okay. Yeah, so there you are. That, what, I don't so know when very James shortly Brown died. After you right, saw him. right after, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, and so they, he probably said, "I've seen Greg." Now yeah, <laughs> see, see Greg and die. Yeah, yeah. So that James Brown was supposed to sing standards because he was revisiting an album that was the theme of the night. That's why oh. we went. We were like, "I'm like." He made an album in the 70s where he sang standards. So he hammers through the standards, right? I wouldn't want to see them. that. He hasn't rehearsed them. Yeah. Willow, weep for me. And then in the middle, I feel good, right? Like he's just <laughs> right in the middle, you know? So then they switch to the other band. Hey, he knows where his bread's buttered. Right? And they did Sex Machine for like 40 minutes. Uh-huh. <laughs> just one groove, man. And they yeah. did like three numbers. Uh-huh. Maybe three or four numbers. And then he brought Tommy, the woman that he was with, that white woman he was with at the yeah. end before he died with yeah. the red hair. Mm-hmm. And he gave her a big intro and she came out and sang a number and everybody's like, what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was so he could go off and smoke. Probably. <laughs> I saw James Brown at the Warfield. Nice. Yeah. I was hoping you'd say the Fairmont because he used to play the Venetian room. Oh, Remember that, that would little be room awesome. in the Fairmont? Didn't yeah. we uh, talk to Jeff Traeger about that? Yeah. About yeah. seeing James Brown in the Fairmont. Um, was that more in his prime? Okay. Yeah. 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 The smack yeah. dab in his prime. I mean, when he would come around and, and really command like the nice places to play, you know, and that's where he did it. Well, he also, like Tina Turner, had that period where it right. wasn't happening like Down the low. late 70s early 80s was not a good financial time for him so he was playing I mean, nightclubs if you think and, about it his comeback was coming to america yeah yeah, yeah. which is what 85 yeah. 84 and 83 it, it, i would say a solid eight to ten years before that yeah. were not good to him no in between like uh what's that payback and all that yeah. and then is 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 fallow yeah because he did fallow. have the blues brothers for a minute brought him a little that's bit. true yeah, huh? that it. was like it's 70s true. he had a hundred comebacks but yeah, yeah the big one was living in america because that was a hit well, i woke up this morning yeah, yeah. i I heard it this time inside. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that, that really coincided with a lot of hip hop groups sampling him yes. at the same time. And Absolutely. So everybody was sort of hip hop really brought him back, yeah. I think. And James George Brown. Clinton, like you know, the, the, because they're, every sample is them. Yeah, true. And, and being in Rocky was it, you know Rocky three. Yeah. Was it, or well, four, that was Rocky living. Four. That was what living in America. Yeah. Right. 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 That was that that Detroit movie. City. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> but you know, when I saw him, I saw him at somebody's Christmas party. What? It was right in the middle of the dot com bubble. Yeah, yeah. And people were throwing gobs of money at you know foosball yeah, yeah. tables in the break room and shit and. <laughs> Some company that some friend of mine, um, actually, it was uh, my friend Matthew Soselski, may he rest in peace, uh, his girlfriend at the time, Carrie, worked at some company. She was writing code for some company that was yeah. developing, you know, something for the BlackBerry or some shit. And uh, in doing that, they said, oh, let's get James Brown to play our Christmas party. Uh And then they had like 200 employees at their place. And they realized, well, we just hired James Brown to play at the Warfield. And the Warfield (laughs) sits 2400. What are we going to do? And they said, invite everybody you know. So it was a Christmas party at the Warfield? It was a Christmas party. I love the Warfield. Yeah. It was terrific. On Market Street. Yeah, it was amazing. I That's saw, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can get anyone to play those parties. People always think like, oh, you know, but literally you can get Elton you John. To, you just you can get in any star- Madonna. I mean, like mm-hmm. Beyonce, Janet Jackson. It, you can get them. It, you just need to give them a zillion dollars. And they will to come Jerry to your Reed. party. I tried to get Jerry Reed to play my backyard party. Jerry Reed, Jerry Reed? Yeah, Jerry Reed, Jerry Some, Reed. When you're hot, you're hot, Jerry yeah, Reed? Yeah, when you're hot, you're hot. Oh yeah, exactly, God. yeah. And uh, his his guy's like, Jerry Reed don't get out of bed for less than ten thousand dollars. And I'm like, All right, game over for me. But wow. yeah, it would have been so awesome to have him out there and play the banjo you mean and tell Bama stories. from the movie Gator. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> lyrics. Smoking he, the bandits. He he wants the, the band instead of saying break it down like he can so he can do some work, he's like, Quit out loud in me. Yeah, like, quit out loud. All right. <clears throat> Jerry Reed. My dad had this single. He loved my dad loved Jerry Reed. And we had <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. Yeah. And what was it? Amos Moses, the one about the guy who gets at by his father used to use him to as alligator bait and stuff. Yeah, and there's that one about uh, 
How like when he gets divorced and he gets the shaft? Yeah, that's right. She got the gold mine. Yeah, and I got the <laughs> she shaft. Got the gold mine. That's right. I just heard but that. He was last like Mr. Week. Funny Country uh-huh. Song. And they right. had the, the marching band bass drum to like boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to affect the jokes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I saw uh, Bo Diddley at the Bernicia State Theater down First Street, and it was fantastic. He had had oral surgery that, that day, so he couldn't do much. Oh my! He's packed full of cotton. Yeah. My mind went a different like, direction. He still performed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mind went a different direction. He, he I'm like Bo Diddley backstage had oral. <laughs> uh, but yeah. you know Small town Whatever I saw him at the hall In Burlingame In 1979 oh. And at some crap club In Redwood City The same year With yeah. Lady Bo Who died last uh, year ago mm-hmm. uh, And I remember Drinking at the hall In Berlingame And I was underage Quite underage at the mm-hmm. time Sitting in the hall The hall was a crappy place In Burlingame That was literally a hall That held 100 people And um, <laughs> sitting there And saw Bo Diddley You know this Friday mm-hmm. Right And I get to the bartender How much you give Bo A thousand dollars Right, I wanted yeah. to like no, and the bartender goes, "That's enough." And wow. I was like, "I don't know wow. how much money Bo Diddley was getting." We snuck in because we knew where the back door was. It was next to the men's room, yeah. and we yeah. parked in the back and we went in and watched Bo Diddley. Yeah. And I don't know if you, when you saw him, they pogoed for the, well, he had surgery the day you saw him, but yeah, yeah, they pogoed the last half hour of the show, the whole band. Wow! Yeah. And the drummer wore a derby. <laughs> that I'll never forget. A derby. A derby. Bo had his, you know, his cowboy yeah, hat yeah. and his square guitar. And it was psychedelic. Like, Bo Diddley yeah. didn't just play, like, rock and roll. It was like... Yeah. Like, he had this phase-shifty, <laughs> freaky thing attack. He'd made the guitar, was it? Yeah. The square right, one. Yeah. And at the end, they just... This is in this, it was punk days, and like he adapted. I'll never forget that. I saw Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley, but I never saw Little Richard, oh. and I always and, or Fats Domino, and those are the two I really wished I'd seen. Yeah. And they played a lot too. There's little, he's still around. He, he, yeah, but I mean, they're you're gonna, all alive. Yeah, you, but you're not gonna kidding. Get yeah. That version of <laughs> that. Bo's on. dead, but Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Fats Domino, and Jerry yeah. Lee Lewis are all still? alive. Yes. Yeah. Jeff is Fats Domino still playing? No, he retired from playing, but he did play up to a couple years ago. He was playing jazz fest and stuff. I know the killer. Katrina was the worst for him because oh yeah, he, the ninth wards where he oh, lived, yeah. and he had to be lifted by a helicopter oh, out of his bloody house. And yeah. it's just tragic that we let that happen to Fats mm-hmm. Domino. Wow. Yeah. We were watching uh, the Girl Can't Help It the other night. You ever see that movie from the fifties? And it's the movie's funny. It's Jane Mansfield and Tom Yule, but. What's great about it is Little Richard, Gene Vincent, and Fats mm. Domino are in it, filmed in Technicolor. Really? So it's one chance to see them in a grade-A Hollywood production, huh. and Little Richard does uh, Ready Teddy, <laughs> and Fats <laughs> Domino does, uh, what's that one? Uh, Monday morning, my head is bad, but it's worth it for the time. That one, uh, Sundays and Met, whatever that one's called, Blue yeah. Monday. And it's at a dance, so the camera comes in, and there's, all these teenagers dancing hmm. and he's on stage singing and he does the whole number and then they has, they've put a camera down here and it shows lo- they're all barefoot and stuff. It's the <laughs> cutest number and it's in bright technicolor. Wow. Huh. But that's a good movie if you want to see a couple of old, it's called The Girl Can't Help Girl It. Can't help it. Jane Mansfield. Help it. Girl can't right, help and that's the theme song. Yeah, I remember it's that. J- and Little Richard sings it and they show her walking down the street with her chest and the guy's <laughs> holding the milk ball and the milk ball explodes <laughs> and the guy looks at her and his glasses crack. Steam comes up, you know, like everywhere she walks because her figure's ridiculous. That's right. It, yeah. Oh my God, it's hilarious. And yeah, they keep playing that. And but little little Richard does a couple numbers in it. And then they show G, Gene Vincent doing Bebop Alula. And they, that's the best part of the movie is like yeah. an archive of how great they are. Yeah. But not crappy black and white. You can also go on YouTube, and there's a French television show that's a full Fats Domino concert from like '62, yeah, full wow. orchestra with yeah. his producer Dave Bartholomew on yeah. trumpet, whatnot, and. Uh, at the end of the show, New Orleans style, the band gets up and goes through the house. Yes. And it's all French people, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all in, it's 1962, so everybody's smoking and wearing <laughs> black suits and shades. Mm-hmm. And they're going crazy. French people have never seen anything like this. It's New Orleans style, so yeah. they just get the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And, de- de- and they're de- marching de- with their feet. Oh, kids. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he stays on stage, and it, it's worth watching. It's about an hour, hour and a half long. It's in black and white, but it's fantastic. Wow. My wife found it on... Um, you ever go on Mark Meyer's site? It's called Jazz Wax. And he covers the waterfront, not just, as you said, it ain't jazz. It's, it's the blues, but uh, <laughs> he'll do a little blues, but also that kind of stuff. And there's all kinds of groovy videos he puts out there. Wow. So I love watching all the old uh, mm-hmm. cats, you know. Hey, did anybody ever read that <laughs> Spy Magazine article about 
Chuck Berry. Oh yeah, oh. it was so vile. I Holy don't even want to shit. think about it. Oh my, my god. god. What, what were they talking about? What happened? In oh, that? he's a coprophilia type guy and all <laughs> scatological sex. My and, man is freaky. Oh, man. Yeah, he, he's, it he, was neat though how they set it up. I'm not going to encur- well, I guess I am tacitly encouraging everybody eek. to go find I prefer it. to think about his gifts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not the kind of gifts that you wrap with a pretty bow cuz uh, he could do that too, but <laughs> there was this guy Excuse who went me looking while I whip it out. He's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> The author was a guy who went looking, and part of the article was about his going and looking Mm -hmm. for this material and meeting like seedy people in seedy motels in like somewhere off of Highway 152 between Modesto and Turlock. There's a little dusty motel, and I met a guy, and there was a tube TV, and I had to do the special knock, and he opened the door, and he said, what I'm about to show you no eyes have ever seen outside this room. Oh, it's Any nasty. Pr- oh, it's bad. It's, it's really terrible. Bad. It's <laughs> terrible. Break it down. John and Pete. Hey, everybody. If you like the Break It Down show. I can dig it. And of course you do. Of course you do. Hit that subscribe button. John and Pete. It helps us out. Say what? Hey, if you're going to like the show I on Facebook or on Twitter, it helps us out if you share the show so people John can learn Pete. about it. So liking it is great, sharing is even better. Let's do some spy stuff. Yeah, just let's get all our friends' phones and have them subscribe to the Break It Down show. Do it. Subscribe, listen to the show. If you love the show, tell five of your friends. Or if you hate the show, tell five of your friends. Well, we have this discussion from time to time around the old house about musical artists and you you know separating the artist from the person is difficult especially in this post Cosby Trump era mm-hmm. uh, but Chuck Berry's a, a, an abuser of women and the, the terrible things that are on those videos and everything and uh, uh, obviously Jerry Lee Lewis has killed a few women along the way and uh, um Married uh, his cousin when she was like 11 or something. 13. <laughs> 13. And as he 13, said on TV, 11. she turned 14 the very next day, which is just the worst thing you could possibly do. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she I, was and really grown, said that? She yeah. was a grown she ass woman yeah, yeah, the next day. horrible human. It really... Uh, and, and, you know, like, if you were going to pick a white supremacist rock star, you might pick Jerry Lee Lewis, right? Like, he's at that level of... I mean, not that he didn't play rock and roll and everything. Right, you know? right. We all know his most famous story with Chuck Berry, which yeah. is unrepeatable. But... Uh, uh, Van Morrison, who is a beautiful artist and has a wonderful voice and has a long, illustrious career, is a miserable, mean, you know, like, yeah. he, he's horrible Crotchety in interviews. Old son yeah, of, yeah. Son of I, I had lunch once in London when we lived in London, uh, and we went to this place in Portobello Road, and he was sitting there with his wife and daughter. And at the time, he was married to, like, Miss Ireland. And I'm telling you, this girl was yeah. five foot 11, right. brunette Maine. Mm-hmm. And the daughter and her were, and he sat like this. For an hour and a half, yeah. and smoked and drank wine and didn't say a fucking word. Yeah. And I've seen him in concert a bunch of times, and he's beautiful, amazing, yeah. Uh, one time at the Will Turn, and a woman I was out during a break. Van, we love you. And he goes, "Man, you don't even know me." Wow. <laughs> Jesus. And then Astral Weeks came out. You know, they, he did the redo of it about three, four years ago, uh-huh. and. Uh, they did, you know, he didn't use the same band, which a bunch of them are alive because he's crotchety. So anyway, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do Astro Weeks as my concert. And of course, everybody wants to see it. They sent this guy out from Time Magazine. Who's this square dude? And they sit him in a room with Van Morrison and Van's got the shades on. And, he's like this. and the guy's like, well, Mr. Morrison, about your, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the music of today? And he goes, I hate it, man. I hate that shit. I like Sonny Boy Williams. And, you know, and he starts to go into this yeah. tribe. Yeah. And he can't be nice. You know, like, right. well, what about Astro Weeks? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Look, but that's what you're doing, you know. So our argument, promote that new right? Yeah. Our argument is always: Are they channeling? You know, like Chuck Berry wrote some of the most fantastic. No one tops him as a rock lyricist. Like yeah. his lyrics are the best, right? Oh, still. I mean, they're they're clever. They're funny. They're yeah. sexy. Uh, what is it? Riding along in my calaboose, tr- still trying to get her belt to loose. Yeah, like that. You don't write a better line <laughs> than that. And what's the one Springsteen yeah. likes? A coffee-colored Cadillac, right? Yeah. Um, but he's a horrible, mean, you know what I mean? And like Van Morrison writes, uh, I saw you writing me on, oh, uh, you wrote my name on the window pane. You know, like, and then you're just this horrible. And a terrible human being. <laughs> you know, like, bitch, yeah. he so was, it's not always. channeling a little Dylan or some shit. Right, <laughs> right. Well, Dylan, you know, like Dylan, Dylan doesn't seem like a lovable guy in any yeah, way. Yeah. 
And that, but, but he wrote, uh, what is it? Uh, you know, uh, uh, it was back in another lifetime, one of toil and blood, when blackness was a virtue. Like, you're like, <laughs> how do you think of that? Yeah. And then be this miserable fucker who takes drugs and sits outside and smokes and, you know, glowers at the Bible. <laughs> glowers at the Bible. <laughs> As he was once described. Is, is he miserable? I didn't... I don't know that he's miserable. I think he is happy in what he does. Okay. But he just if you're makes everybody band, else miserable. I, I've, I've heard stories from people who are in his band that say, like, he doesn't really, like, talk to you or anything, you know? Yeah. And there's no set list. He starts playing. Yeah. And well, you I join just, in. I just watch... I don't mean to interrupt you at all. Oh, I, just, I just watch the... Um... You'll never get a word in if you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. I, I like to listen sometimes. I just watched the documentary on Tom Petty on Netflix. Oh, that shit right. is so, so good. Four hours long. Four so hours. So good, though. Yeah. So good. Yeah. But Worth were, every minute. Yeah, but he, I'm sure you saw it. That whole little uh, moment where he went on tour with um, with Dylan. Yeah. And they ended up making like a like two albums or right. some shit yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then they started the... the, the, the Traveling Will Traveling Will Berries. Yeah. Will and it was just a really interesting moment there. But he talked about how we would... There was no rehearsal. There was no real practice. They would just go. Start playing, yeah. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. Let's move on to another song, like in the middle of a song. <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah. wow. Yeah. I don't think he sits down and like writes out a set list. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun, though. Well, they kept them on their tippy toes. You, you know, know, I appreciate well, the band has to like, the way. Know. Yeah, they, they've got to lean forward. Yeah, you know, they, they do. Attention. When you see him play, the band stands yeah. like this, watching That's him every minute. Because he changes key. <laughs> he does whatever yes. the fuck he wants to And do. lyrics yeah. in the yeah. middle of a song. He'll go he, in G he minor. How about that? And doesn't show up. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. I saw Austin Prince at the Concord Pavilion. And he was doing, at the time, it was the Gold Experience or something. Oh, I like that album. doing a ballad. Pussy Control. Right. Endorphin Machine, all that. Endorphin Machine. He was doing. Doing uh, one of the ballads on the record, and um, he just wasn't feeling it. I mean, mm-hmm. it sounded fine, but he just stopped after in the middle of the first verse, they and know. he went, mm-hmm. "I'm not feeling this one. Let's move on." And just started yeah. playing something else. And I thought, okay, well, thank you. He's like, you I know got nine hundred of them. So. We do, yeah. And hey, if you're not feeling that one, <laughs> don't be forced to. Right, that's you're amazing. You're not obligated yeah. to do that. He was please. so amazing. Yeah. I saw him in Purple Rain, mm-hmm. and uh, that was they do. You know, so now he sits down. He's put the guitar down for a moment. Now we're taking a piano break. He goes over the piano. He plays free, right? Like what's that? The mm-hmm. second album or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then he goes, "Be glad that you are free. Sing if you want to." <laughs> so ev- everybody sings, right, on the next one. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, thank you. And that made me laugh. So I'm like, really? We're not going to sing? You're Prince. Yeah. Sing if you want to. <laughs> now, and he took out the big, you know, like squirty guitar that ejaculated yeah. and all that. Humped the floor for half an hour. Took a shower at one point in the show. <laughs> Got in a fake shower. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and tur- purple rain, yeah. Yeah. Amazing show. Oh, on the Love Sexy tour. Uh, when Sheila, he had Sheila on the drums. They met, by the way, at the Circle Star. Did they really? Yeah, they went both to watch. Well, she's George from the Bay Area, right? Yeah, yeah. They went to see George Benson, and he knew of her, and she, of course, had heard of this uh, guy who had just got signed to Warner Brothers. So they were in there. You know, hell, they might have been 19 at the time, mm. but they met backstage at the Circle Star. Yeah. I did not know that. Her, I've got to meet a couple of times, and I love her. Yeah. Uh, she I, still I, looks beautiful, doesn't she? She's, oh, yeah, she's still so absolutely hot. stunning. I did, about 10 years ago, I did the $10,000 pyramid, whether, <laughs> or whatever it was called, 25000 when yeah. Donny Osmond However hosted However much it, it was yeah. at the time. <laughs> and they, the, you know how there are two people and then the two contestants, mm-hmm. and the yeah. other person was Sheila E., and I was wow. like... Yeah, yeah. You know, I was vibrating with yeah. excitement. Yeah. I mean, everybody she loves Sheila Lee, but she couldn't give a clue to save her life. <laughs> <laughs> we still totally love you, we love Oh, you. no, but like she was, when she used to kick the hi-hat, you know, yeah. she played standing up. And yeah. all that. Unbelievable. Yeah, she's unbelievable still. She's amazing. They. Yeah. Um, her father was from Oakland, was he? Yeah. yeah. Pete? He's still around. Yeah, so she's he's, from the Bay. In fact, yeah, this weekend, playing yeah. Yoshi's on Jack London Square. Wow. The... Uh, Love Sexy Tour, though, she went off into her solo, and somebody threw him a basketball. And then a, ba- a basketball <laughs> went up, and he pretty much went all the way around the perimeter and just drained three-pointers while she was playing her solo. Wow. Huh? That's We hilarious. all just went, look at his little ass. Really? Yeah. You know, of course, yeah. yeah. And I'm not kidding. He didn't miss. He yeah. just drained him. Yeah. He went all the way around the horn. In his high heels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like in, it's just like in the, yeah, just yours. like in the Chappelle show, <laughs> yeah. in full regalia. Oh Charlie yeah, no, he Murphy never went in. Lying. I knew I know uh, uh, the woman who's married a guy who's married to Jenny Child uh, who did a uh, uh, Don't Want to Fall in Love, the Canadian songwriter. Her husband's named Cat, and uh, 
he works with Wayne Brady, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and John Mangum, and I met him through them, and I've worked with Cap, and he was, with, he was in Princess Band too. And he said they'd get woke, like uh, a phone call, um, we're, Prince wants to go shopping, everybody, full hair and makeup. So you had to It'd go down to report. in the morning and shit. Yeah, you fucking, yeah. okay. Like everybody I need my get entourage. Hair, <laughs> hair did, costumes on. Like mm -hmm. he didn't go out. Like, mm -hmm. like you or it. I would go out yeah, and yeah, like some cut offs. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he didn't do that. Like he went out in full. And then he talked about having him, they get back after a gig and Prince goes, I'll race you. They're at like some hotel that's got a big lawn. And he goes, Prince is in his stage costume. Uh -huh. He's wearing six inch okay. heels. And he wants to race. And he goes, I had to race him across the lawn. <laughs> And then another friend told me a story about God bless him. That's why his hips were fucked. Playing up hoop with him in, in in Minneapolis at the studio, yeah. and that he played hoop in his heels. Yep. But that he was outstanding athlete. Yeah, he could play. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what was that famous one? Is it Eddie Murphy's crew? It's there's uh, a famous story. Chappelle. It's yeah. Chappelle's yeah. crew. Yeah. They come in to play him, and they're like, "Oh, Charlie we're going to beat his ass." Oh, it was Charlie yeah. Murphy. Charlie yeah. Murphy. It was Charlie right. Murphy. Charlie crazy. Yeah. We're going to beat his ass, and yeah. they're like, "Oh no, uh -uh. oh no." They get in there, and Prince is and all that. Would, yeah. And, and then he would talk <laughs> shit. Too. I'll like, take you right to the bucket. The yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Taking you to the bucket. Like, they play wow. blouses Prince versus skins. Prince got a crossover. His little four foot. And this big, you know, five foot four. My favorite. He's squirrely. He'll get past you. What was it, Lisa, who said? Uh, my favorite thing about him, he was like a fancy lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw him a couple times. I saw him in the Love Sexy, but not on the tour. It was one of those Oakland, uh -huh. and he had done Love Sexy at like the the Coliseum. The, the, yeah, he did. And then it was a theater in San Francisco, like the Warfield or something. Uh huh. Like a one. You in saw the, after show. Yeah, one in the morning gig. Oh yeah. Brought the whole band over. Cat was in the band then, uh -huh. and uh, uh, and Sheila A. Went Just on. barely. Yeah. 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 Wow. The thing that he used to do is after his big arena show, he would go to some place in town, mm -hmm. and if you were holding a hundred bucks. You could get in, and it would be someplace like Ruby Sky or the Warfield or right. some little tiny place. Some intimate place. Yeah. Okay. And if you had 100 bucks, right then, right there, you could drop it on a ticket and get in right then. Yeah. And then he might do another one at 3.30 oh, yeah. somewhere else at a smaller <laughs> joint. That was, was so weird. I mean, I know we didn't know all about his painkillers and the, how hurt he was, but he was still doing those gigs up till the end. Oh, yeah. I mean, three in the morning gigs, yep. still doing them. And he didn't just do like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. He did like two and no, a half hours. He you did know. two and a half hours. You were exhausted at the end of the gig. You can like, imagine how he felt. Right. You know, like he, I, just, I thought he was always slim yeah. and athletic. But he must have, his hips must have just been Oh, they broken. were demolished. Broken. Yeah. Now, I have a friend, Josh Luck, who uh, was in the New Power Generation. It was mm -hmm. like the fan club, but he was the super in, like he would go to Minneapolis for Prince's birthday and mm -hmm. shit. Wow. But one year, he was, when Prince had his residency at the Rio in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I wish they went to. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, Josh went to it for his, for his birthday, celebrated it, bought, you know, got the room package or whatever. And when he checked in, he went into his room and there was the flashing, you know, the phone flashing. When he got there was a voice message and it was somebody saying, hey, Josh, this is so-and-so from the New Power Generation. We understand that you're here for your birthday and Prince would like to see you at 1.30. Come down to the auditorium. It had some very specific instructions on where to go and what to do. And he did it and he walked in and they were doing sound check at 1.30 in the afternoon. And there was the band and the crew and about 30 people. And the 30 people got seated right up front. Wow. And they got to listen to the sound check. Oh my God. Then they had lunch with the crew. They brought in like a buffet so they'd have lunch with the crew. And while they, you know, they would serve themselves. And then while they sat down and ate, Prince came back out and the band got up and said, okay, everybody, while you're eating your lunch, I'm going to take some requests. And he no. took requests yeah, for oh an hour God. and a half. Are you kidding oh me? An hour God. and a half? That's yeah. A fucking meeting right An there. hour and a half. Jesus Christ. Wow. That's giving back. Yeah. yeah. He, he did, man. Well, I remember wow. one of his quotes, he said, someone went, do you write music? And he went, I am music. Mm -hmm. But I feel, I feel like he was that kind of person. Like, I, I he just too. wanted to play and play and play and play and play and play and play. Yeah. Some people, it's a job and yeah. they act like it's a hassle, but he never acted that way. He just... Mm -hmm. You never got cheated. The show was so long, you were going to die of thirst at the end. That's true. You never got cheated. <laughs> no, he didn't and, cheat you. And you better know, do your homework because he's at every, never, never meant to cause you it. Sing it. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, had yeah, to sing yeah. it. I'm not going to hit the high note. Yeah, 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 never yeah. mind. Yeah. No, no, you <laughs> there was 42,000 yeah, people. Motherfucker, work. you sing. Exactly. Wow. Here's how we bring this full circle. Greg Proops, I feel like you're channeling. 
To what? do 300 episodes of the smartest <laughs> man in the fucking world with a microphone in front of you and just go. That's hard. You know, I was talking about. We at least have somebody to bounce off. Pete and I were prepping on our way here. A lot of times we'll go, okay, uh, let's talk about, you know, so-and-so and and they did this and did this and just kind of put things sequentially so we have a framework for what Mm -hmm. we can talk about. We did none of that. It never ends up working like that. Yeah. (laughs) But we we put it there. You know how it is. You you put it there and then then whatever. We didn't, we never even got there. We said, okay, Greg Proops. And then we just went, Jesus Christ, man, we're going to have to try and shut that guy up because he's just going to go crazy. <laughs> Unsuccessful. I mean, how many fucking things have you done? There's not even a, okay, whose line is it anyway? That's the easy one here for yeah. the folks in America or yeah. for the folks in, 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 in England. Mm-hmm. But you've done so much other shit. I mean, from, you know, voicing animation and. Uh, and you should be voicing it. You do a lot of really good voice. I know. Yeah. You're so kind. What are you channeling, man? What are you channeling? Uh, I just uh, try to. Uh, I like to play, and uh, I don't. You know, you, grown ass kid. You were talking about Tom Petty, and you know, mm-hmm. I remember when he made that documentary. He was very grumpy. Uh, an interview I read with him, and he went, "Oh yeah, you know, they shot every show on a tour because it was this elaborate thing." And he goes, "But when you tour, what at the end of it? What have you done? Just a bunch of great shows." And I was like, "But that's the point." <laughs> If you're a troubadour, like mm-hmm. Bob Dylan, right. who yeah. plays all the time, yeah. or Prince, who played all the mm-hmm. time, your job That's is what to you play. Do. That's what so you do. I feel like when you say, oh, are you channeling? I'm not trying to be funnier than anyone else, but I'm going to play all the time because I'm not, I don't want, sitting at home is not how it's it what you do. gets off. Yeah. yeah. And nobody, commun- you're not communicating with anyone when you're at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I go out and play live and I go around the world and I go here and do gigs and stuff, then I know I'm communi- connecting with people. Sure. And so that's that's sort of what I think uh, my... I don't really have a philosophy other than I like to get high, but uh, <laughs> uh, can I, can that's I my philosophy. Can I ask anything about Please. comedy? Do you mind? What, yeah, there? come on. Let me just ask you just as We're somebody in house, by who the way. we've known, has, you've been out, done every single kind of, of comedy, stand-up in particular, over the years. What have you seen that's changed over the years? Because the kids today don't realize the hustle that you guys have established for the kids. Uh, today. <laughs> I call them kids because the motherfuckers are kids. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> are kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? What's the, if you were starting over today, because yeah. it's different, it's easier, it's faster to get in. You know what I mean? While we're calling everybody kids, and I don't want to cut you off, yeah, but fine. this motherfucker looks spectacular. Looks no, uh, now you guys, I'm gonna, you're going to make me late because yeah. I'm going to stay for more flattery. <laughs> Oh, I forgot you're going to stay for more flattery. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Pretty Ricky's with the I, I don't know what I'd do now if I started. <laughs> I, I, I started playing live in clubs, and that was the only way then. Yeah. This was in the early, late 70s, early 80s. And the early 80s, the only way you got a gig was you went to open mics every single night. Mm-hmm. And so when I started, I started um, in San Francisco then, and it was Warren Thomas, uh, 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 Paula Poundstone, Bobby Slayton. They were geniuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Pritchard, Will Durst. Jake Johansson started like a year after me, and I saw him do all open mics, watched him develop into the great comic that he, when he first started, he didn't get no laughs. Hmm. And then it took a couple years, and then he figured out how his thing worked, you know? And you you see Jake, like Jake's indelible, you know how Jake works. But I go back with him so long that we saw each other when we weren't funny. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, uh, I wouldn't know now whether I would start uh, on YouTube like Bo uh, uh, Burnham or, or whether I'd write. You know what I mean? Like there was no option when I started. The only option was get up every night. Is there is five there, nights? Is a that week. better? Was that better for you? It was better for me, but it also like that's the old fashioned part of like these all the musicians were talking about. Prince and I were the same age, right? Mm-hmm. Around the same age, and uh, seventeen, eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean born at the same time, and and I think he felt the same way. Like from the time he was a kid, he was out gigging. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Old you know what I mean? And I don't think there was another way around it. He didn't sit at his house and go like, mm-hmm. "I'm going to make a thing," and like he went, "No, I'm going to play gigs until I'm great." The way James Brown did, the way Ray Charles did, the mm-hmm. way anybody good did. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know another way, but I know there's a million other ways now. The biggest change is everything comes over the telephone now. That's liberated us. Uh, I had a manager say to me a couple of years ago, we've taken back the means of production. I don't need a TV show to make me 
famous. I was lucky enough to be on one when TV was really popular. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. TV was popular in the 90s, and <laughs> it's not quite as popular now, but everything that comes over your phone is popular. And the podcast allows all of us mm-hmm. to go directly to the people who want it, mm-hmm. which we never had that opportunity before. Mm-hmm. Well, however many downloads you get on your show, I guarantee you is more than will fit in a club. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I can go play wow. a club, and that's there might be 200 play. people in the club, maybe 300. I could yeah. even play a theater with the Who's yeah. Line guys, and there's 1,500 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I do a podcast, it's 60,000 people or 100,000 mm-hmm. people. And the the reach of that, yeah, the reach valid. of that. Now, it doesn't financially remunerate the same way that other things that have. 200 people in a club. Usually. Right. But yeah. So one thing feeds the other, and I think that's the biggest, most important, most exciting change is the immediacy of mm-hmm. comedy. Mm-hmm. We used to have to wait. Oh my God, uh, uh, Carlin's going to be on Midnight Special, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Or yeah. Pryor's going to be on The Tonight Show and you'd like fucking yeah. wait and you couldn't tape it and nothing and you, <laughs> you know, it yeah. was like an event. I got to stay up. Or yeah, I'm going to go gonna see Live at the Sunset Strip, but I got to go to the movie theater yeah. and see it three times mm-hmm. because I can't do it another and way. you got to go to the movie theater with the sticky floor, by the way. I saw that at the Empress. <laughs> right? That, that place right? wasn't right. So yeah, that was it? Oh really. no, no. I was no. going to ask too about like uh, Alex Bennett, for at least for, oh, from our uh, era, was man, great you for you guys. So yeah. instrumental in my career. Yeah, and there's not. I mean, yes, comics go on morning shows, but it's a different. It wasn't thing. like Alex Bennett packaged. on the quick. Yeah, you guys. I still on. speak to Alex. I did his show this year. He's got He's an podcast. internet show yeah, now. Right, yeah. He's in New York City back again, and um, uh, I told him that I loved him. I, when I wrote a book, I sent it to him with a big florid um, thank you and. Uh, I think he knows how much he meant to me because I was able to go on his show every week for right. weeks of time. And then sometimes when he'd go on vacation, they'd ask me to host. So if you hosted and you were doing a show that week, you were sold out. Yeah. You were sold out. It was there were so a lot immediate. Clubs yeah. in the Bay Area then too. Well, this is before telephones. People don't remember, but the radio was so important in the Bay Area. And, yeah. and Alex Bennett show, Bob Rubin, mm-hmm. me, Warren Thomas, Tom yeah. Kenny, uh, uh, Keep going. Uh, Bobby Slate, Tree, yeah. the whole Tree. Thing. everybody yeah. you name. I mean, a million people. And so he really, really was instrumental in making comedy popular. And he had really decent taste in comedy. He didn't actually like shitty comics. So right. <laughs> the comics tended to be rather intelligent and had something to say. He didn't like Pacasaurus. You know, the, there was never like jugglers or you know what yeah. I mean it wasn't that kind of comedy yeah and uh, uh, he would put on shows and he would pay good money he also I remember getting like audience. A, uh, a thousand dollars to do a show in like 1980 something yeah. to do a 15 minute set yeah. which was like that's you know huge well that's I mean he didn't have to he could have given us 250 we'd have done it yeah. but it was like no it's at the Great American Music Hall or the Masonic oh, or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and like so everybody got good money and you mm-hmm. just came out and did a set mm-hmm. and everybody knew you from me it was kind of like Alan Freed right like that mm-hmm. the rock and roll show like mm-hmm. I'm gonna yeah. put on this show and put on seven eight comics yeah and everybody I'm pay everybody okay it's and top of the pops that's right <laughs> right, right? Yeah. and so you know it's not one person all night it's seven mm-hmm. you know exactly. so I I think you're right he was people who remember and of course uh, there's enough old of us to yeah someone the other night was like hey i used to go see you in san francisco in the old days and it's yeah. like alex bennett and they always bring up alex bennett because yeah. he well, back cool. then, remember when we would go to see okay, our very now. first comedy shows, <laughs> you had to look and go, if I, if I heard any of these guys on Bennett. Right. And if you hadn't, it was like, uh, sketchy. Right. You know, I don't know if I want any of that. It was deal. an endorsement. It really was. The first yeah. time I went on, he hated me. He didn't have me back on for like six months. Then I went on and I was like a little less obstreperous and he got to know me. And then, like I said, they eventually, they asked me, and this is so stupid, I don't even know why I'm telling you, but. When he quit, they asked me to take over his show. And I said no, because Johnny Steele took it over, Mm -hmm. as you recall. And, of course, he was fired like six months later (laughs) on air, like during a break. Like, (laughs) no we're going to commercial. And then Johnny, come here. The program director wants to talk to you. (laughs) And when we came back from commercial, we weren't there no more. And I said, I would take the gig, and I really appreciate you offering it to me. And it was a load of money. Mm -hmm. One, I'm not getting up at four in the morning every day. Mm -hmm. And two, you're going to change formats and go country in six months. And that's nothing to do with me. I mean, they didn't, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. in your mind, you think, mm-hmm. you, don't, trap. you don't follow Alex Bennett mm-hmm. and then be Alex Bennett. Yeah. You couldn't, uh, you know, you couldn't do it. Yeah, it wasn't going to happen. And I thought, uh, you know, maybe it would have been good for me. I don't know. But at the time, I remember thinking, radio business is run by giant corporations. And they're going to come in and change. Mm-hmm. And it's not you. It's just like, oh, you know. 
Your right. numbers weren't his. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like, well, nobody's numbers were his. He was, <laughs> he was Alex <laughs> Bennett. He was getting huge numbers. He, you know? Yeah. I mean, in your case, you could say he made me famous. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Well, he'd made Johnny famous, you know? Yeah. And Johnny was a perfectly, he's a great comedian, and he's really quick. And it's like, you know, you're just going to get fired. Radio is about being fired. Wow. <laughs> Anyone who can survive 20 years in the same mm-hmm. place in radio is a genius. I mean, look at Howard Stern. He, when the time came, he split. Yeah. And he had and the, the biggest radio good. network in the world. Leave on a high note. That's well, right. Adam Carolla, Adam Carolla, when it all went down, he just switched over. Yeah. And went, I'm building a studio yep. and I'm going on the internet. <laughs> Thank goodness. Technology. Yeah. Hey, right, I uh, have to go. Yes, we are respectful of your time. Speaking You're beautiful. of le- letting you off on a high note, thank you, Brad Proops. You're, man, we're you, man. enormous fans and even bigger now. I could stay for two hours and done this, but I, I really do have to go. I'm sorry. I didn't have more time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Can we thank do you, it John. again another time? Yes, please. I know thank, you, John. Our, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Hilliard. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, but... Thanks. Of course. <laughs>